Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be discussing about shared array buffer. But a premise to understanding shared array buffer is to understand what are transferable objects first. So if you know about transferable objects, well and good. But if you do not, I have created a video about it. You can go through that and then move on to this particular video. Let's move on now. Hey guys, let's try to write down shared array buffer on console. And as soon as I write it down, you see an error here, which says shared array buffer is not defined. Well, the reason that we are getting this error is not because the syntax is incorrect. The simple reason is that our website is not in a cross origin isolated state. Now, what is a cross origin isolated state? So there is a variable here you can write down on your browser, which is called cross origin isolated and its value is false. So until this particular value is not true, we cannot access shared array buffer. Let's try to make this particular variable as true. So by definition, a website is in a cross origin isolated state when the server that is serving you files also responds to you with following headers. First header should be cross origin opener policy with the value as same origin. And second header should be cross origin embedder policy with the value as require cop or credentialless. Once that is done, now you can play around with shared array buffer in your console. So I've created this small express server here. Uh, I'm creating a server that runs on 8080 port. And for each and every response, I'm setting these headers here. And let's try to run this port. And here, this is currently running. Let's try to find the value and now it's true and you can also try to write shared array buffer here and now it's accessible as well so let's move on to the code now what is shared array buffer how do we use it and what are atomics as well and how it is beneficial when we are using it with shared array buffer so what is a shared array buffer well shared array buffer is pretty much similar to array buffer it is actually an array buffer but there are two key differences First one being it cannot be detached or you cannot transfer it like array buffer to different context. By the way, I highly recommend that you should go through the transferable objects video first or somehow know about the concept. Now back to shared array buffer. So the second difference is that unlike array buffer, it can be shared across multiple contexts, providing you the same memory space. So this sharing essentially allows us to perform multi-threading. Let's have a look at it now. So back to our code now. So I have created a new function called create web worker. And here I'm simply calling the worker URL inside server.js. I have this URL and it will just send me a file called worker.js. And inside worker.js, I have simply written uh, on message. Uh, let me just simple function and I'll just simply log ev.data. And I'm passing in a message called hello. So let's try to run it. And a load worker and it is loaded as you can see here. Fine. Now let's try to create a shared array buffer. So shared array buffer and four. And let's try to create an in 32 array with the same shared array buffer and this time we will just pass in the shared array buffer to the worker JS and after I post this I'll also do console log and i32a I'll just simply log the i32a so by definition shared array buffer is shared across uh, every context so if i simply pass it like this it will not create a separate copy of the memory space so inside worker js i'll simply update this data and sub let's create a 932ra with using the shared array buffer and let's just add 10 here. So let's just reload this and 
see what's the value of i32 is so initially i'll just click here and you see i32 a zeroth value is zero and if i play it now its value is again zero but let's see what its value is in console so you see its value has updated to 10 here because it was updated inside a web worker and that is what shared array buffer actually means it simply means that the same memory space is shared across each and every context and you can simultaneously parallelly work on the same memory space which essentially allows you to do multi-threading now there is another concept in multi-threading called synchronization so javascript has provided us with a class called atomics which essentially allows you to load and store variables inside the memory space in a synchronized way or in an atomic way which actually allows user to perform operations in a thread safe manner so let's go to the atomics functions now so atomics in javascript is a static class that provides us multiple methods to perform atomic operations on a shared array buffer or in fact on array buffer so you can see we have and, uh, add, etc, etc. All these uh, operations actually pertain to integers or you can say numbers. And we would actually talk about wait, wait async and notify. So we'll be discussing about these two methods or these three methods and how do they work. And because other methods are fairly simple, add means you'll, you can add two values and you can perform and operation. Load means that you are, you know, loading some value, loading in the sense that you're fetching some value. Store means that you can save some value on a particular index, right? And then you can subtract, perform or, perform XOR and all that stuff. So let's see what is notify and what is wait. So wait async and notify actually work hand in hand. So you can wait on a particular index of the typed array and wait for its value to be changed. And that change would be notified by the atomics.notify method. So let's take a look at it now. So let's create a shared array buffer. Uh, shared and with the value of four. And let's also create a 32 array. It's already there. I'll just use sab here. And we'll use atomics.wait async. And here we will say let's wait on i32 index. Oh sorry, i32 typed array. Index I'll wait on is zero. And the current value at that particular index is zero. So I'll just say var uh, wait. And let's see what weight contains now. So I'll press enter and weight has two values. Weight is an object that has two values. First one is an async and second one is the value, which is a promise. So let's just wait on that promise and dot then p and let's add a debugger here. Cool. So now this particular promise would be pending unless we notify this weight that the value or this particular index has been changed. So let's try to store a value at this index. So we'll say atomics.store i32 0th index and we'll store one there. So one is there. but what about the notification? The debugger is not hit yet. So the easiest way is to do notify. So we have stored the value, we have changed the value. Now we also need to notify the weight that, hey, I have changed some value. And now zero, and then that's it. So wherever a particular weight is applied on a particular index, you can notify on that particular index. So I'll press enter. And you see the debugger is hit here and the value of P is OK, which means, hey, it has changed and we can just resume it now. So in short, 
weight allows you to wait for a change on a particular index of a typed array and then notify would actually notify that particular weight that hey change has been performed you can proceed with your working now this is done to perform synchronization in thread multiple threaded environments you can use multiple synchronization techniques for example we have logs right so here javascript has provided us atomics let's take a look at another example where we'll have four parallel web workers and we would notify each and every web worker once a particular value at a particular index has been changed let's move on so i have written this small piece of code here where i'm creating four web workers and i'm posting shared array buffer and id to each and every one of them inside worker.js since all of them would be running parallelly uh, if id is one i'll store value one at zeroth index of i32 array and then notify to all the waiting methods inside the queue but after 10 seconds and for all the other web workers who does not have id as one they'll continue waiting for the notification and as soon as this piece of code gets hit this console log would be printed because all the web workers would be notified so let's run it on the browser i'll click this button and it stores value in 10 seconds so they all are waiting for the notification to happen and in some time yep so all the three have been notified together that the value has changed and now you can perform mutation on the shared array buffer this is the magic of atomics and shared array buffer you can perform synchronization and also multi-threading using the same memory lane and perform intensive tasks Let's take a look at it again, but we'll add debugger just to see what's happening behind the scenes. So debugger here and also at line, not here, but uh, yeah, here as well. Cool. And let's increase the time to 20 seconds and run this again so i'll load the worker and you see we have hidden this debugger here because we have uh, id as one we have all the web workers that are currently i think they they are not rerun yet because the debugger has not hit so i'll do a play here and first one is hidden second one and then third one and then after 20 seconds this particular debugger would be hit. So let's just wait for 20 seconds. Uh, Any time now, I think. So let's see. So yeah, see this debugger got hit and its ID is three. Then this again, its ID is two. And then again, its ID is four. So this is what's happening behind the scenes. Usually, the notification would be in a synchronized way but since we added debuggers uh, you know some piece of code ran earlier than the other and this is why the order is not in a synchronized manner so here is another example uh, i've changed the code a bit here so what i am doing here is that i'm fetching the value the initial value uh, inside val and then if val is not equal to id minus one It'll continue looping on here and it'll simply wait for the current value to be changed and then it'll fetch the value and then again if it is not equal it'll again continue to wait on it. So what will happen here is that it'll create a chain reaction. Initially if the value is 0 then it is equal to id equal to 1 which is also 1 minus 1 is 0. So it'll come in here and after 5 seconds it'll notify to all the web workers that hey the value has been changed and the next time since the value is one which is equal to second id id equal to two it will again notify but this time to third and fourth web worker and then third would actually notify to fourth web workers and so on so the output would be initially after the first five seconds it will say notifying for worker one then another five seconds it will say notifying for worker two then three and then four so this is how you can create a chaining so that each and every thread 
each and every worker works in a synchronized way. Let's try to run this piece of code. So I'll create a refresh. I'll just refresh here and then click on load. And then for the first five seconds, it'll say notifying for web worker one. Then it'll say notifying for web worker two after the five seconds. Then it'll say for three. And then it'll say for four. Yeah. Just to add in more information, you can just console log here and waiting, not here, but here, waiting for worker and then ID. Let's refresh this, load again. So waiting for second, third and fourth since zero is already equal to ID minus one. Notified by the first one and this time it will waiting for just third and fourth. This time it's just waiting for the fourth one because previous one have been notified. And then this time it just notified for the third one and then fourth one came in and set the value. So that's it guys for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.